Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to another color along from volume 16. It's Ann Manera, and we are coloring another page today from volume 16, which is a grayscale page. So today's color along is actually pre-recorded because I needed to take care of some, you know, stuff in life. Life gets in the way sometimes of coloring, don't you think? So this morning we are coloring um, a grayscale page from Color Along Volume 16. I'm going to be using woodless colored pencils. And these pencils are from Ashley Nicole Arts. And this 30, it's a set of 36. I've used these before. I don't know if anyone has a set of these. Comment below if you do. And um, they come in these cool little uh, cardboard or... I guess it's cardboard, right? Little canisters. The back of the set has a little uh, sw little swatches of what all of the colors are. And there's just 12 to each one of these little things, these little tubes, cardboard tubes, that's what they're called. So let's, before we get started, let's take a look at what we've done so far in this book. I can't even believe that this is the 16th volume. I say it every single time, honestly. I'm, I don't know if I'm ever gonna, going to actually believe that this is volume 16. Crazy, right? For those of you that have been following me from volume one, holy moly, right? So, so far we have completed uh, the first one, Textures with Tape, that was a fun one, and we've completed Speckled. So to, this morning we are here with uh, Woodless Colored Pencils, and today is Thursday, April 22nd. So uh, this is the first one we did, Textures with Tape. We just simply placed the tape underneath, and I do have it somewhere. Do I have it? I saved them, these little rubbing templates that I create. And this was just a little round piece of cardboard. don't really know where I, I got this from. And I just put some masking tape all over it, placed it underneath this page. So if you haven't had a chance uh, to do this particular one, uh, head over to my Facebook page, click on videos over to the, I think it's at the top, and you can um, take a look at this video and color along with this page. But there were some really cool results from this page from everyone that had watched. And then this one uh, we did on the second week of uh, this book, which was last week on April 15th. This was uh, titled Speckled, and I used Prismacolor Premier colored pencils in this. Um, and I just added a little bit of uh, black specks to on top of the color, on top of the colored pencil. And then towards the background, I just kind of gave it that shading uh, with that blue color um, and just kind of went with it. I think this is an ink tense pencil in the background. I think I added ink tense pencil with this also. So this morning we've got woodless colored pencils and this is a grayscale page. And I mean, are you a grayscale colorist? Because I remember the very first grayscale book that I had done um, was called Simply Still Life. And that grayscale book, oh my goodness, it was from years ago, right? So much fun to color that book. If you have that book, uh, break it out and uh, and give it, a, give it a whirl. I actually have a new book um, that is, um, Heading to the Amazon shelves. As a matter of fact, let me look right now and see if it is actually ready for purchase on Amazon. I'll take a look here. Nope, it's still in review. Okay, so um, take a look at the, be in, just kind of be on the lookout for uh, that new book that's coming out from, uh, from me. It's a new grayscale book called Natural Beauty, and it'll be available um, over the coming days. So, and it just has some really interesting uh, still life and flowers and all different types of things. So, if you are new to grayscale coloring, what I will say to you is this. Um, the first thing you want to do is take a good look at the page that you are coloring. I Also, I put a piece of paper behind it. I always like to do that. And take a look at the grays and the lights and the darks and all of the shadows and the shading that are already in there. And what that does is really... Uh, Kind of teach you or train your eye to know where should the dark spots darker areas go where should i add more uh more color or heavier pressure and where should i kind of lighten up a little bit and i think what it also does is that it will it'll teach you that when you are finally coloring something that is not grayscale i'm looking for this lavender color that i have that is always hard to find because it's kind of like in a weird pencil. I don't know. Guess I don't see it. Progress red. No, that's not the one I want. 
Um, what this one is. I'm just gonna give this one a quick little. Uh, it's orange. Maybe not. Maybe I'll go with yellow for one of them. Um, anyway, where was I? <laughs> okay, so uh, you want to go by the the lights and the darks, right? So here's this kind of darker area here. Now, what's cool about grayscale is that you really do not have to use much pressure. You can use the same pressure across the entire page. And what that will do is really um, magically just kind of create whatever needs to be created. Because, and you'll see as I'm coloring this, as you color over this petal right here, the gray will actually kind of burst through and the shadows will kind of burst through and you'll be able to see it. I'm going to, I am going to give this a little bit of a, a sharpen because I like to have a nice fine point on these. And if you've never used woodless colored pencils before, what is different about these is there's no wood around the, the actual pencil, the color part of the pencil, but rather there's just paint. They sharpen great with an electric pencil sharpener. So let me just give it a quick sharpen. Okay. And I'm just going to get, I'm just going to dive in, you know, um, so I'm just coloring this with the same pressure for the entire petal. And I'm coloring one petal at a time. Um, coloring one petal at a time rather than coloring across the whole page because it's important to color each, each individual object. Even if you're just coloring a non-grayscale book, a line art book, it's important to color each individual object rather than just coloring like directly and straight kind of across it. Um, if you, you know, so we just want to make sure that we are using the same pressure by using that same pressure. I mean, look what's kind of happening there. We've got a darker area here. I could go a little bit darker there and a little bit darker here. And let me see what this color is. This is called Jasmine. I am going to use this, oops, use this Jasmine color here um, and just kind of make it a little bit darker where the dark spots are, just to kind of give it a little bit of contrast. So, you know, contrast can be created with either uh, uh, the, the lightness and the darkness of colors or different colors themselves. So I'm actually working on uh, coloring the coloring handbook volume three and one of the topics in that book is, is contrasting colors and talking about what happens with those colors, um, how you do that, what, like what's contrasting to you. Some people, I mean, it's all subject to someone's opinion as all art is. So you wanna make sure that you have um, you know, use your, use your own judgment. Don't worry about what color someone else thinks something should be. You got dressed today, so, well, let's hope, right? But you got dressed today. So just think about that you matched your colors accordingly. Now, if you're out there in cowboy boots and a fuzzy sweater and 80 degree temperature, then more power to you, I guess, right? Um, I mean, my point being is that we all kind of know what color something should be intuitively so use that um use that to your advantage so i'm just kind of adding these a little bit here and there and it's just kind of accenting just a little bit and i'm bouncing between the two the two colors um because i don't know it just keeps it keeps it more interesting for me i guess to bounce between the two you could easily color all the petals with the yellow and then go on and color all and then go back in with this jasmine color um excuse me if you were using those two colors so i was hoping that i would be to be able to do today's uh color along do this color along live with you today but you know life gets in the way what can I say? Do you ever have that happen? Gets in the way of your coloring, gets in the way of making art or doing anything fun. Um, so I needed to uh, take care of a few things today. So this is a pre-recorded video and um, hopefully you'll be able to follow along and uh, join me again next week for our live video, which is next Thursday, the 29th, uh, which is shading with colored pencils. So that's going to be, that's always a fun one, isn't it? 
shading with colored pencils. You know, I think that if you can use uh, colored pencils effectively and you know how to shade with them and to just kind of get used to the different techniques with them, then you can apply those techniques to anything else, to any other medium that you want to color with, even to paint with. Um, so I'm trying not to pivot my page here, but I may have to. And you don't want to outline anything because this is just kind of like a realistic object, realistic, uh, you know, realistic item, these flowers. I think these are Gerber daisies, if I'm not mistaken, right? Pretty flowers, especially as we're coming into spring. Although, I don't know, though, because it did snow in my neck of the woods the other day. So, um, and I thought I saw somebody else uh, put pictures on Facebook with snow. Can you believe it? Here it is, April uh, April 22nd, and, and we've got snow in some areas. It's crazy. I think last week we talked about, like, uh, who, puts a, who puts their winter clothes away. I mean, I certainly don't. You never know when winter may strike. When the flakes may fall, the S word, you know? Uh, when the flakes may fall throughout uh, July. I don't know, one, one uh, summer in this area, I remember it was freezing all through July. And it was a year that we got a pool, actually. We put an above ground pool in, in the yard. And I remember we all decided that we were, we were like convinced. We've got to go in this pool. We've got to go in this pool. One of my dogs, actually, at the time, uh, who's no longer with me, decided to climb the ladder of the above ground pool and jump into the pool. I mean, it was freezing outside. It was like July. It was still like 50 degrees outside. It had just never warmed up that year. Um, and, you know, it was just kind of one of those things that maybe this is, you ever do something and you just think later on, hey, this is just not meant meant to be? Well, let me tell you, that was that year. That pool was just not meant to be. I'm gonna flip down to the bottom here with these uh, petals down to this area. Let me just check my video. Refresh a little bit if I need to. Um, I mean, we. I remember go. We remember going. Remember going in the water of that pool, and it was just like knives. Like it was so cold, um, and it just never, never warmed up. And then after all that, uh, the liner of the pool was leaking. So, you know, clearly it was not a good idea. I'll have to wait for my, uh, you know, my luxurious built-in pool. We'll have a, a giant coloring party at the at the luxurious uh, built-in built-in pool. So he has this jasmine color just kind of going over it. Now you could go back over all of these with white. You know, the white pencil becomes a kind of a colorless blender. Um, or even just like, look, what do you do with the white pencil? What's the mystery of the white pencil? Um, what do you do with it? Put comment below, comment, put, put it in the comments. What do you do with the white pencil? Do you use it as an accent or do you use it, um, as a colorless blender or to blend an actual color and make it extremely creamy. So just kind of flipping again between these two colors. Now here's this yellow again. This one's, I don't even know the name of this one, but it's a uh, Ashley Nicole. I think it's a, yeah, it's an Ashley Nicole pencil. The other set of uh, borderless colored pencils I really like is Koi Noor, which they kind of like mixed in a little bit with this with this set. Um, I opened I opened a drawer to get all this stuff out earlier today, and all of the pencils flew off to. The... Do you ever have one of those days where it's like, what is going on? Every pencil fell out. It's like the other day I had a a box of gel pens sitting next to me, and it slid off a chair and uh, almost hit Scarlet, and there was like hundreds of pens in there, all over the floor. I was like, what? It's crazy. So see how just this light pressure is just kind of making it just kind of pop, you know? I mean, you can do nothing to the background, or you can do, make the background really dark. And I'm just gonna jump over to here, this petal here. And I'm using that same pressure. I'm not letting up on, uh, and I'm using kind of a medium pressure overall because, because of the color uh, and I'm coloring in the direction of the actual petal of each petal. 
even when the petal becomes a little rounded at the end I'm coloring in the rounded ear like kind of in that in that direction because I think it's important to make sure that you follow along with the shape of what you're coloring it'll if you're coloring a circle color in a circular motion around and I'm not saying color like circular motion in the sense that it is uh color in circles like this but color around in this motion in the ear, direction of the object of the actual circle so I think it, it means it makes a huge difference in the final result and in the direction of a petal uh, definitely makes a difference same thing when you're painting something paint in the direction of what the object is All right, so there is my yellow. Now I'm going to, I will go back into this in certain areas and kind of just add a touch of black to it. So it just kind of, uh, it, it'll make a pop. You'll see what I'm talking about. Now the middle section, I like to use for this particular uh, flower. This is going to be green in the middle. Give it a quick shot. And this one is a ko -I -Nor. This one's called uh, light green. And for these, you could either color each individual one like I'm kind of doing right now. It's a little di different, each individual section of the actual uh, center of the flower. We don't want to color um, across like we talked about. We don't want to do that. So I am going to try to just kind of, you know, color each one. I'm not even lifting the pencil. I'm just kind of doing like, you know, mad scientist type thing. Like just kind of scribble, scribble, scribble over here. Scribble, scribble, scribble over there. Think of it that way. And then I'm gonna, I will go back in, into the middles and to the in-betweens and hit it with a very dark green or even black will we'll do for that part. This section in here, I'm going to color this green even though it is darker in there. And look how that's just really uh, picking up the darker area of green. Now, for these, look, it's just kind of, it's still the middle, but they're a different direction than what we had just colored there. So these are more like petals that are here. And I'm making these green. Maybe they're supposed to be yellow, but I'm making an executive decision that I'm like making these green. It could be fantasy. It could be real life. You know, are you a uh, get your heads out of the, uh, keep your head in the clouds type person or are you like in reality all the time? I think some people think, I think I get a lot of comments from people sometimes that like, what are you even thinking about? Like, why are you thinking about that? Be realistic. But eh, realism, I don't know, overrated sometimes. All right, so there's that section there. So we did this uh, light green color. This one is a darker green, and this again is a Koi Noir one. And I'm just gonna kind of go in between these. I've got a good point on this pencil, so I'm not worried about it. But just kind of in between. Different sections. And it's really just kind of making it pop by adding this uh, kind of a dark area to the in-between sections. And just kind of really just pushing the pencil into those areas and by that I mean we don't want to make it look like it's just kind of like a splat of dark green 
sitting there, but instead we want it to almost look like it's pushed underneath um, this section of the flower. Now, if I take some black, I'm going to leave this pencil here too also, um, too also. Well, there's a redundant thing, right? Let's add a tiny bit of black, just to kind of make it pop a little bit. Now, we can say at this point, okay, well, where would the light source be? If, if it's shining light here in the bottom portion of it is going to be much darker, then I'm not going to put any black up here. But rather, I'm just going to see if I can just accent a few of these little things. No, like, rhyme or reason, I guess, but it's like an underlighting, especially in here, when we kind of get a little darker, even right here. This could be kind of like, you know, a really dark corner. And by that underlight, underlighting, I guess I kind of mean, uh, rather than outlining it, you're kind of tucking it underneath there. So, like, what would be, like, a shadow that is created? And here also for these petals. See, they're just kind of... A little bit of black but we don't want to outline it so just kind of tuck tuck that color under a little bit of a flick and it'll just really kind of make those uh, those petals pop the other thing is that here's that line I'm not going to finish it because if you leave it unfinished it'll just kind of make your eye just kind of travel to where uh, to how it kind of disappears into the distance type thing is a little bit of more of a darker area a little bit of a black into this, uh, where all of this green is again, just kind of bouncing between them. Just kind of where you think it should kind of fall. Now I'm not gonna add any black up towards the top because I want it to look like the light is shining in this kind of like heavy bottom type thing. So think like white pants, black shirt type thing. You want your eye to move to the bottom of whatever that flower is. Now for the next flower, I thought I had a good lavender, but I don't know what happened to it. Let's see what I have here. Let's see. This one, um, I'm going to go with this orange color, this orangey red color. And I want it to be, uh, again, the same pressure, but this particular flower is much uh, darker. The grays are much darker. So I want it to be the same pressure. And then let's get rid of the graininess by adding some white. One thing I don't like about these pencils is that they roll across like crazy. And um, if, you, if you drop them, they break. If you drop them on a the hard surface. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of this uh, white on top of it. And see how that just kind of made it a little bit um, get rid of the grain a little bit because it blended it. So there's my white pencil uh, colorless blender type thing. And I'm only going to do that on the lighter areas. Make them just kind of pop. And then what I'll take is this brown color and I'll kind of go in the middle where my docks are. So just like we did that with the jasmine color on the other flower, we're just going to do that here with this brown. And again, moving on to each petal, coloring each petal in, a, in the direction of each petal, each petal separately. I'm gonna add some white to this right here to kind of give it that uh, white look. A little bit of brown here. I mean, and I mean a touch of brown, not a lot of brown at all. So moving on to this one. So have you colored grayscale before? Is this your first uh, time coloring grayscale? Um, I have a lot of grayscale books available on Amazon. Matter of fact, uh, the, the price is fantastic. The price is only $5.99 for grayscale coloring books. Um, 
those are Amazon prices. You know, the other thing too is a lot of people will like to buy a PDF of a book, but I always kind of recommend get the get the book book, you know? Get the paperback book for a grayscale book because the the amount of ink that you're going to waste or use I say waste because I'm kind of an ink an ink fanatic. The amount of ink that you're going to use is incredible. So um I would definitely stick with uh, the book book. The book book, you know? You know what I mean, the book book. I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a, a color here. I don't know, I kinda like the yellow better. What do you think? Sometimes the color does look a little different. Again, coloring in the direction of the petal and each individual petal. And I'm gonna add some white to this just to kind of make it creamy. Now in here could be a darker section there, um, kind of like the, you know, the dark corner, the darkest corner that's happening. Um, I'm treating this brown almost like I was treating the black also. So I guess I'm kind of treating it like the black and the uh, jasmine was treated on the yellow flower. And then just kind of giving it. Had another runaway pencil there. You could easily call these on the side of the pencil too if you don't want to have that if you wanted to have it look a little uh smoother maybe maybe you don't want it to look look too scratchy there's that petal there here's another one here bounce back to the white kind of got this white section here again in the middle there here's another white area and then I'm gonna bounce back in with this brown. So here is again, same pressure, you know? Um, some people are really intimidated by grayscale, but then once they finally do use it and do color it, they are just kind of hooked. So, and a lot of people, I mean, there's controversy too, right? There's a lot of controversy with grayscale. People saying that, oh wow, they only call it a grayscale photograph. What did they do? They didn't do anything. It's like people saying that about digital coloring. Um, I think that anything that you can create, whether it's making a cake from a cake box, from a cake mix, you know, or uh, making a cake from scratch that's creating or uh, coloring a, a coloring page that's grayscale versus uh, something that's hand drawn. Um, you're creating something. So I think that it's the process of creating rather than the, I don't know. What do you think? What do you, what do you think about that? Tell me what you, what you think in the comments. Um, kind of flip up here with that brown color. Now, the other thing that people uh, do sometimes is they photograph their work, they photograph their coloring page, and then they go back in with their phone, with the camera that they photograph. Most people are using a cell phone, right? I mean, let's face it, the, the camera is an incredible quality um, on a cell phone. So here they are pho uh, photographing their work. They uh, put it into the, into the phone, into the camera, and you can adjust it. Maybe the lighting is different. Maybe you need to enhance it. It becomes its own piece at that point. It becomes its own. Um, you can actually turn this into a totally different piece. I mean, maybe you want to have this be much darker or much lighter. Uh, maybe you want to change the color. And just by popping it into the 
into the camera and adjusting those filters. But there's people that disagree that that is not, it's just not fair. Like, why do people do that? Well, it doesn't really look like that. Hey, how many people have colored something and they take a, I mean, this happens to me all the time. You take a picture of it and you think, that looks nothing like what I just colored. It looks way better in person. I mean, or it looks way better on screen. So, I mean, which one do you use? It's like saying, I'm going to take a picture of myself. And you, of course, you're going to use the one you want, the one that looks the best. So, I, I, I think that anything you can do to it to enhance it, why not? It's like digital coloring. You had to choose the colors. You had to say what color should I make this um, so I don't know are you a digital colorist do you color digitally all right so here we have just this white that's hitting this I'm just hitting it with that white now I'm going to go back in with my brown And just kind of hit the, the darker areas and now I'm going to get the black that's not black well that is not the one I was looking for oh here you are you little bugger kind of got away from me for a minute all right so I'm just going to kind of put a little bit of black again down at the bottom like we did for the yellow flower kind of under lighting, under lighting it. Yeah, under lighting it, low lighting it, low lighting it. Just so that we kind of see, okay, well, there it sits. This one, if I kind of just flick that line there, kind of go off to the edge, then I'll be able to kind of see that, that that petal is definitely in front of this petal. So that's kind of what you're creating is that hierarchy of what is placed with the placement of the petals and what's placed in front of one another and what's placed behind it, another one. Here's another one. I'm going to accentuate that part of it, accentuate this part also. So it's kind of like a little bit of a flick. That makes sense. I think it makes sense. We'll say it does. I'll assume it does. Here's another green color. I'm going to go with this a little bit of a darker green for this particular one, just like we did for uh this one i'm just kind of doing you know mad scientist scribble scribble again all these little kind of like shapes here and there all these little scribbles well they're not scribbles but they're all kind of like little shapes because the whole point is that you do not want to color this in a sense that you're going across 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 but this particular middle section i am going to do that and then i'll go back in and highlight some stuff that's there and then you know i'm at the end of it, I'm not going to do anything to seal it. I mean, it's done. You know, what's done is done type thing. But I think that if I go back in, maybe with a lighter green also. This one right here that we used on this particular one. Let's kind of blend it so it makes it pop a little bit. Those little edges. And then we'll go back with the black. Now, as far as the background that's there, I'm not sure. I feel like I'm going to leave it the way it is. I'm not going to color that background because I just kind of want to focus on the flowers. And maybe when I finally do like crop, do photograph this or whatever I was going to do with it, whether I was going to turn it into something else and I could crop it so it was going across and there was no, uh, these were just kind of like, you know, in your face type thing, that type of thing. Here's my black. Again, a really sharp point is really, um, really key. 
and I'm just going to kind of pop these little black just fine lines into all of this maybe kind of a little bit of a scribble scribble over here just kind of where those in-betweens are so for next week's color along we are calling with colored pencils again and we're going to be working on shading for Mandala. So hopefully you'll be able to join me for that. That'll be a live color along on Thursday the 29th. Again, my apologies for having to do this as a pre-recorded video, but uh, let me know what you think about the pre-recorded color along. I mean, a lot of people say to me, you know, I can't really make it to that time. And all color alongs are always available as replays here on Facebook, or you can get the link over on my my website, annmanera.com. So if you... Uh, have any questions about it you can always give me a shoot me an email you can send me a message um and i'll always be happy to answer it so i'm going to call this complete i'm not going to do anything else to it i like how the yellow contrasts with the uh kind of orangey red color i like the green center even though maybe i should have gone a little bit i'm going to do like a critique of my own work here even though maybe i should have gone with maybe different yellow petals um i really do like how it came out i think the only thing i might add is this cardinal red color here. Um, let me see what happens if I add it a little closer to, I don't want it to look Christmassy. Okay, I'm just gonna add this a little closer to this. Now, one thing about these woodless color pencils is they're not as creamy as like a, um, a Spare Farben or a Black Widow even. So uh, if you're looking for a creamy pencil, I don't think a woodless pencil is really creamy. Um, but it's probably one of my favorite pencils. What what type of pencils are your faves? Comment and post in the comments what you what you like to color with, what your favorite brands are. Um, I'm always trying to get different companies to um, to do giveaways, sponsor giveaways. Spare Farben and Black Widow have been very, very, very generous uh, with giveaways over the years. Um, and I guess one of the companies that's kind of a hot pencil right now are those square pencils, and I have not purchased them yet. Brute, what are they called? Brute, Brute Foomer? I don't even know how to pronounce the name of them. Um, what do you think about those? I know that there's issues with the, uh, pencil sharpener themselves, um, because it's a square pencil versus a round pencil. That part bugs me. I mean, if you're going to make a pencil, do they sell a pencil sharpener for it? Like, that company? Or... It seems like people are scrambling to get that actual that actual pencil sharpener. That that kind of bugs me. That part of it is making me think, you know, is it really worth it? But let me know. Let me know what you think about that. All right, so this is what with colored pencils today. Let's see what we're going to be working on next week, and we'll take a look at the upcoming weeks also. This one is shading with colored pencils. It's kind of a square-type mandala. Um, and we'll be using any brand here. If there's a brand you want to see, I'll take a look in my stash and see if I have that particular pencil. Um, and we'll work on that. This, the next week after that, we move on to, which this brings us to May. Can you believe it? Remember when 2020 was like, when, where, when is this year going to be over? Here we are on the cusp of May, right? Um, for this one, we have Crayola Super Tips and this one is May... My goodness, I guess I better look at the calendar, shouldn't I? Let me see. Let me see what the calendar says. Um, calendar. May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. Oh, how exciting. We'll have to have tacos while we're doing this one. Uh, Crayola Super Tips with markers. This is going to be a lot of fun. Um, um, with water, I'm sorry. There's a way to use Crayola Super Tips and make them look like they're almost like watercolor paint. So that's going to be fun. Then we've got another grayscale... Uh, um, a grayscale page following in the following on the following week coming up which is the 12th the 12th of, oh, i'm sorry no oh let me let me back up for a second this particular color wrong is going to have to be rescheduled because may 12th is coloring camp i'm sorry may 13th may 13th is coloring camp and my mistake this is may 6th let's start over crayola super tips with mark with water is may 6th thursday this one is going to have to be rescheduled so stay tuned for that and then we've got warm colors happening on May 20th with this. We're going to use any brand of, I'm not sure what we'll use for this. So I want to hear what you guys want to use for this when we get ready for that. 
And then the next one is May 27th. Um, just a number two pencil uh, for this page that says Use Your Wings. So, whew, coloring camp is going to start on um, May 12th. And if you uh, have seen, have not seen the uh, May calendar, it is on my Facebook page. It's in the Just Color group. Uh, so head over to that and uh, uh, take a look at the, the calendar if you need it and you are not able to find it, then please just let me know. So, wordless colored pencils, thank you so much for joining me today. Again, my apologies that this was not live and instead it was pre-recorded. I hope you have a happy Thursday and a great weekend and I will see you all next week. Thanks so much.